So good morning. Um, I am uh, Anna Linton, and um, I'm very happy to be here today to talk about Formiva and our ambition to improve vaginal health for all women, no matter country. I have been uh, working in the pharmaceutical industry for 25 years. But I am, um, have not been that long in Formiva. I joined the company a couple of weeks ago, uh, early August. Formiva is a Swedish uh, femtech company. It was uh, founded in um, 2015. And what we do on an everyday basis is uh, contributing to improve female health and vaginal health. Last year, in March 2021, we were listed on uh, uh, NASDAQ for First North growth market. The company has developed uh, its own uh, drug technology system. It's a uh, mousse technology, which actually enables active uh, uh, agents uh, or drugs to be uh, administered uh, to, uh, to skin, locally on the skin, or to body cavity, without degrading. And I'm sure you, you understand that basically, uh, Venerol is where we also uh, head for broaden our product portfolio with new products. We have already one product on the market, which is uh, Vernivia. It's indicated for bacterial vaginosis. It's, bacterial vaginosis might not be known uh, by, by the diagnosed bacterial vaginosis, but the symptoms is certainly well known, and it's one of the most common vaginal infections among uh, fertile women aged between 14 and 49. So this is an uh, OTC product, self-care, antibiotic-free, which you can uh, buy in the pharmacy. It's launched in uh, Sweden. And now we are certainly heading for international launch and uh, we have ongoing partner dialogues uh, in uh, multiple markets with multiple partners. In parallel, of course, let's get back to Venerol, we are looking into uh, developing new products, new pharmaceuticals based on this uh, unique mousse technology. And as a and of course, we are also looking into uh, uh, get a broader number of indications for Vernivia. Let's get back to Venerol. Um, important, of course, is that uh, we have a solid protection, uh, a patent. Currently, we have uh, two parallel uh, applications ongoing. It's foam one and it's foam two, which gives us a very solid, good protection towards this mousse technology. We also received a, a, a positive opinion from uh, EPO, uh, the European Patent Organization, and expect, therefore, the patent to be uh, approved in Europe before year end. I mentioned in the beginning that I have a quite long past in the pharmaceutical industry, and I'm sure you also understand the uh, the benefits of being able to administer a drug locally rather than giving a patient uh, systemic treatments where you have these uh, unexpected side effects. So, uh, based on Venerol, once again, I see great opportunities in uh, broadening in the, uh, our portfolio with new products moving forward. Bacterial vaginosis, very common, and it's a huge market. Globally, it's valued to uh, 1.3 billion euro, and it's growing. It's growing with uh, approximately 5% every year. This is the most common vaginal infection among women, age 14 to 49. And it's characterized by very a uh, fishy, distinguished smell from your vagina. And with exceed discharge as well. So that is really the characteristic symptom of bacterial vaginosis. And which also differentiates it 
versus Canada and other infections which are common among women. Not to be forgotten here is uh, standard treatment today is antibiotics. And let's not forget that we have an ongoing crisis with the antibiotic resistance. It needs to be stopped unless we uh, together contribute to this and stop this. In 30 years, equally many uh, people will die from antibiotic resistance as today globally die in cancer. Then you can imagine. We need to find solutions here in order to uh, save antibiotics for where it should be used and uh, uh, develop new innovative treatments which are antibiotic free. Venivia is on the market. We have uh, documented the efficacy and the safety of this product in clinical trials. It is antibiotic free, it is an OTC product, it is uh, a self-treatment. But most important is that it has great efficacy. There is a, a very fast uh, symptom relief, so within 12 hours you have reduced the smell. Compared to antibiotics, this is fast, because with antibiotics it takes two to three days. And with this it takes within 12 hours. It's also shown to, to have a cure rate in line with antibiotics. But most important, and what is really unique with uh, uh, this product, is that it restores the normal balance in the vagina, which is the cause of bacterial vaginosis. And this is unique. To combine all the, these three characteristics, which you can see, this is from one of our clinical trials, you can see the symptom relief, which is really a fast reduction of the pH which is the cause of the uh, characteristic smell. Normally, the vagina has uh, quite a low pH, but when you get the bacterial vaginosis, it's increased. So, of course, it's uh, important to reduce the pH to uh, get a fast symptom relief. In the middle, you have the reduction of the pathogens to ensure that uh, you, you actually, what happens is that the bad bugs, bad bugs actually overtakes the good bugs in the vagina. So, of course, you need to reduce the bad bugs to ensure that you re restore the normal balance between those uh, microorganisms. And then you have the last one, which is uh, where Venevia uh, have shown to stimulate the normal production of lactobacillus, which are the good bugs in the vagina. So that is what differentiates uh, Venevia from other current treatments on the market, no matter if it is OTC or if it is prescription drugs. To further strengthen the cl clinical evidence of uh, Venevia, we are currently conducting a clinical trial which is very much similar to what you would do if you had a, a full-blown pharmaceutical. So this is a double-blind um, uh, placebo-controlled trial we are currently enrolling uh, patients into the trial, expecting uh, this to be finalized before year end, and that we can um, have results before summer 2023. Our journey, I would say, just yes, started. We have um, a lot of opportunities and a lot of things ahead of us. I mentioned Vernivia, our first product is already on the market. We are taking the step to international launch right now. Uh, we have decided to go with a partner model where we have a mixture between uh, distribution deals, mostly for Europe, because we own our CE, uh, CE label in Europe. We are a medical device. But beyond Europe, we aim to go for licensing deals. And licensing deals um, also have a financial advantage as, as it is combined with upfront payments. And we are definitely heading for profitability and turning red numbers black. So that element is, of course, important for us. The other part is uh, broadening our portfolio. We're looking into new products based on the Moose technology. And the other part is uh, new indications for Vernivia. First markets, or I would say our key markets, or priority 
markets to launch Vernivia through partners is uh, Europe and US. But these things uh, also takes a little bit of time. So of course we have uh, multiple dialogues with multiple potential partners for multiple markets. I just mentioned profitability, turning red numbers black, reducing cogs is important. The device we have today is a multiple dose device. So it allows you uh, to get your seven day treatment, this device. We are now shifting towards uh, a single dose system where you have an applicator for each time you administer your dosage. This also merged into the pipeline strategy we have and also with the uh, global rollout of Venevia where export is facilitated through this new device. And of course, a reduction of the COGS with approximately 50%. Last but not the least, I will just point out a very few things here. Uh, uh, the second quarter this year, we saw the sales take off of Venevia, which makes us very confident and is also um, something we bring with us uh, in our partner dialogues, and which is important in these partner dialogues. On our account today, we have 11 million in cash. And we have just recently uh, announced a uh, new sh uh, share, uh, new issue of shares, which will bring the company 65 point million Swedish krona before issue cost. So net would be 13.5 on the cash. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, are there any questions? Uh, actually, I have a question. Uh, of course, uh, you talked about the rollout a little bit. Uh, is there anything to be said today about uh, timelines on the rollout? So when can we expect uh, the US to go on board? The U um, well, a little bit. Uh, is there anything more to be said about that? Valid question. Our ambition is to sign the first distribution deal before year end, which is Europe. And secondly, when we go for markets beyond Europe, which would be licensing deals among those US, as you say, within uh, one year. So one to two licenses agree agreements within the next 12 months. Is there anything required to go into those new markets that you need to kind of um, develop or, or work uh, to, be able to, to be able to enter? There is, and it's um, in in Europe. We have a new uh, regulation, which is common across Europe. But of course, if we we look at a medical device and uh, how our product would be perceived in other regions, that differs. And this is also why it's so pivotal for us to have a close partner that knows the market and can make the launch efficient. And so far, I mean, we can see that you have net sales already now. And uh, uh, apart from the, the, the pure money that's rolling in right now, uh, what have the customers, uh, have you received any feedback on, on, on real live customers? We have, and it's very positive. It's, um, it's important for us to keep them close to us, especially as it's a self-treatment. Um, and we also conducted a um, user study where we really got insights about if I'm a user of Vernivia, how do I perceive the product? And uh, the study also showed that more, more than 80% of the woman, women would recommend the treatment to, to a friend of theirs. So it's really well perceived both by the profession as well as uh, the user, end user. Because, and the end user is, of course, the most important because that's the one who, who needs to like the product and to clearly know that it works. I missed the part. Is, is it the regulatory pathway for the US, for the FDA? Is that already on its way? Uh, that was one question. The other one is, what about the distributor contracts for Europe? Is that already signed or is it that the future task for you? The regular pathway uh, for US has been thoroughly um, uh, analyzed by us, and there are different uh, approaches. You could e either go the, uh, the way where you are approved by the FDA as a pharmaceutical. Uh, you can be classified as a medical device, or you go as cosmetic. 
So we will we'll explore those three regulatory pathways together with a partner we identify and to see which is the most efficient and the best. Secondly, uh, the last question is, no, we have not yet signed a distribution agreement. No income paper yet. I feel obliged to ask you, though, um, as you were talking about the rights issue, could you talk a bit about how the money will be uh, divided and spent? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, first of all, um, it will support our global strategy with launching uh, the global expansion of Fermiva as well as the international launch of uh, Vernivia. Secondly, it's very important that we uh, finalize our clinical trial, the PIVA01. And the third part is to broaden our portfolio with uh, new, new products as well as new indications for Vernivia. And yeah, speaking of those new indications and new products, what what is the criteria when you look for a new indication? What is it that you think that you could aim for? First of all, we, we, um, we look at the preclinical trial, which is done in vitro, to, that has shown in which way to go. And then together with the scientific uh, board, we, de we decided to prioritize uh, uh, prevention treatment for bacterial vaginosis, as well as prevention treatment for uh, gonorrhea. A sexual transmitted um, infection. And then as a final question, which is a much broader question and just because yeah. I happen to think it's interesting, as someone working in female health, do you think there are any particular challenges or obstacles to overcome when it comes to attracting investors to, to women's health? Historically it has been, because it has been an, ar an area which did not really attract investors. We see that changing, um, and there is a huge interest in uh, femtech and uh, new innovative uh, uh, solutions for women. And, and I'm happy that we are part of this journey early on. And you're so I'm very positive to this. So are you, would you say that you are noticing a surge in interest and that you are benefiting from this? Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Anna, for your presentation. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for your time and listening. <laughs>